CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the Cleveland Clinic Foundation's Diastology and New Echo Technology Summit. This excerpt is taken from course director Dr. Alan Klein's lecture titled Epidemiology, What Diseases? How Do We Assess? Prognosis. We know much more about systolic heart failure than diastolic heart failure. Systolic heart failure, you know a lot about the pathology. Diastolic heart failure, there's a lot unknown. These are some of the tools, and we go over this very carefully in the course, where we have the typical mushroom flow, pulmonary vein, tissue doppler, color MO, uh, whether you're young, um, uh, normal, or uh, adult, normal, delayed relaxation, pseudonormal, restrictive, and we have these different algorithms. We have new guidelines. But let me show a case. This is a recent case. This is a, a really tough case. Maybe I need some help from the audience. This is a case I saw last week. A 23-year-old college student with shortness of breath and chest pain. Uh, that was the four chamber. This is the short axis. Here's the mitral inflow. Here we have a respirometer. Here's inspiration. Here's expiration. Uh, deceleration time was around 130 uh, milliseconds. Uh, the IVC was enlarged. Since multimodality imaging is uh, here, um, notice that there's something um, near the RV, and notice the abnormal septal motion, abnormal ba septal bounce. So which of the following is correct? You can just show, um, this, is this a normal echo for a 23-year-old? B, things will get better. C, is major concern, or call Mayo Clinic. So. Obviously, uh, it's a major concern. Um, how would you treat this uh, young 23-year-old girl? Would you go, go with medicine or would you go with surgery? Who, who says medicines? Raise your hand. Who says surgery? A couple of points. Uh, actually, we went medical for, uh, so our diagnosis based on the, uh, on the features was that she has effusive constriction just to, uh, just to go over that, uh, especially on the MRI, you can see the septal bounds. There's an organized uh, uh, fusion um, adjacent to the RV that's tethering the heart. She um, has probably idiopathic pericarditis. She had a very high uh, set rate in CRP. She has definitely constrictive physiology, and we, we're trying anti-inflammatories. She's on triple therapy, um, including uh, prednisone, NSAIDs and uh, colchicine. And uh, it's been a really tough time. Every time we get her past 20 milligrams, on a very slow taper, she gets the recurrence of her, um, her symptoms. Now, one downside, as you hear from the uh, lecture on constriction, if you do surgery on these type patients, when they're inflamed, even though you remove the lining, uh, they get adhesions. And you can make things worse. So the goal is to try to calm down the inflammation, and then eventually uh, may have, she may need a pericardiectomy. We're hoping that this could be transient constriction. But th this is a, um, we have a big practice, we have a big center on, uh, on pericardium, and um, these are not that atypical cases, but probably she will, she will need surgery. Top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. For more information about this self-study activity, go to www.cmeinfo.com slash 765V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.